I'm Amy, sex educator, sex and relationship coach, and co-owner of purepleasureshop.com. I'm April, VP of the cutting-edge sex toy company, Hot Octopus, and I dedicate my life to the business of sex. We are on a mission to teach you how to have hot sex, deep intimacy, and how to make your own rules for who you are as a sexual being. Welcome Welcome to to the the Shameless Sex Revolution. Want to learn more? Go to shamelesssex.com. And for 50% off of some of our favorite sex toys, use code SHAMELESSSEX at purepleasureshop.com. You are listening to a pleasure podcast. For more from our sex podcast collective, visit pleasurepodcasts.com. Well, hello, everyone. Hi, everybody. Welcome to the Shameless Sex Podcast. It's still masturbation May. Yes. One of our favorite months. Yeah. It's, April's looking at you like, is it May? I I'm don't like, know. it's still May? <laughs> Holy shit. It's still May. We ran a wonderful contest and um, we actually, actually we did two contests on giveaways. We're using the word giveaway now. Oh yeah. Submission but May. they had to do something to receive. The first one was uh, you had to do a creative project. You went and masturbated. You went and touched your bits with the intention of connecting with them. And then you did a creative art project after writing a poem. April made a beautiful flower bouquet in, was it bouquet? What would you call it? Offering? Arrangement? Arrangement in the shape of her vulva and flowers. Not that your nice. vulva. I tried to Did save it look it. like your vulva? Yeah, maybe a little bit. It's beautiful. So. Your vulva is beautiful. Oh, thanks. And then we did another contest giveaway with Dolly, the Pleasure Muse, where people who entered got free passes to her Touch, Feel, Connect online vulva mapping class. And for those of you who didn't enter in time, it was the number. One, 102. 102. I was way off. What'd you say? I said 197. Awakening Wait. the Pussy, Vulva Mapping with Sexologist, Body Worker, Dolly Joseph. And we both had sessions with her. Yes, we did. And we talk about it on the episode and so what she's offering online this touch feel connect online vulva mapping class is a self-paced class teaches you how to heal and empower your own pussy what does that mean more pleasure so you can do it from home it's completely self-paced so those of you who didn't enter the giveaway and you want to go and get to know your pussy better in a way where you can have more pleasure you can do some healing maybe a pain maybe a numbness maybe you just want to learn more you can get 20% off now when you go to pleasuremuse.com slash vulva and use code shameless. I highly recommend this. Vulva, vulva. Dolly is one of my best <laughs> vulva masters. I think she's changing like her name to vulva. So vulva. She's going to be vulvarine like, for Halloween. It, is it like, was it Seinfeld? We're like, her name's Mulva? Mulva. <laughs> yeah. Oh my God. Oh my God. seen that in a while. Anyways, go check it out. Again, pleasuremuse.com slash vulva. And it is a wonderful, wonderful offering. It ends May 31st, 2021. That is to sign up. And if this is the intro price, everyone, it will be $100 more when it's offered again in the fall. Again, if you're a vulva owner, not a Volvo owner, this is something that you will want to check out. It's Dolly's but Touch if you have Feel. both things, Volvo and a vulva. Both. Hey. Then you can drive to the <laughs> online. Touch, it's not, it's online. <laughs> Touch, feel, connect, Volvo mapping class. Go check it out now. Again, use code Shameless to get twenty percent off. And if yeah, anything, if at any rate, go listen to the episode that we did a long time ago with her. She's yeah, she's awesome, fucking incredible. Uh, let's see, are you ready for a sex question? Yeah. Shabbat. All right, this is a short one from busy stay at home mom. What are some tips for dirty talk? I have such a hard time with what to say and when to say it. My husband and I have talked about it, likes and dislikes. Any ideas would be helpful. Thank you. I think this is hard for a lot of people. It, I know it used to be hard for me, and I can't say all aspects of it are easy for me. I've just found the routes that work for me, but pretty sure most of my partners, they talk way more than I do. But I, also, we do like a little more dominant submissive thing. I think you do this too, right? You like to be told you're your dirty little pussy, and I'm going to fuck your dirty little pussy. Yeah, <laughs> I think it's easier to have a script that you can feel comfortable with saying already worked out. That's what I do. That's what I count on. If it's hard for you to talk sexy or dirty, what you can do when you're when you're talking is that you can just speak to what is present for you. So say you're being touched, someone's touching your nipples, and you're like, I don't, I want to talk sexy, I want to talk dirty, but I don't know how, well, how. Just speak to exactly what's going on. Your fingers touching my nipples. I feel tingling in my nipples. Whoa, my nipples are getting engorged right now. Now my pussy's throbbing. Now I kind of want you in my pussy. So what you're really doing is speaking to the presence. You're being present with your body. You're speaking to the sensations. You don't really have to be heady. You're literally just paying attention to what's happening in your body and you're speaking exactly to that. Another thing that uh, worked for me was to just get really clear what kind of dirty talk was mine, right? Um, what, And I think part of dirty talk is getting really comfortable with saying different words for maybe genitals or for arousal. 
Uh, and so for me, pussy is a word that I use. You like pussy too, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. So you're practicing saying that and getting comfortable with that. And then I can speak to more about my pussy and practicing for the, the words that I use for my partner's bits. So my partner has a cock. I love the word cock. And now I can speak to it really easily, but I'm just well practiced in it. Yeah. And the episode was 164, phone sex and dirty talk with Amberly. Yo, she's amazing. And she's hilarious. She was a phone sex operator mm-hmm. for many years, has a great voice, and she is really funny. She also should be a comedian because... So 164, go check that out for the stay-at-home mom who yeah. asked us this question. And the last tips I'd say is um, some of the things you can practice. Talk in front of the mirror, just with yourself, talking to the mirror. You can uh, start by journaling erotica, too. So writing out and then reading it to yourself or to your partner. Uh, but this really is a practice. So you figure out what's authentically yours in terms of your sexy or dirty talk, and then you start to practice it. And then you'll, you own it. And um, you might find some things that aren't yours, like maybe saying my dirty little pussy is not your jam, and that's okay. You find whatever you like. You're, maybe, yeah. You're, maybe you want to be, be my super clean pussy. My <laughs> <laughs> Fuck my super clean pussy. Yeah. <laughs> or my super clean vagina. Speaking of inserting something into your vagina, <laughs> we wanted to talk about the curve that Peer Pleasure actually has. Peer Pleasure Shop. Amy will tell you all about Peer Pleasure Shop because that's where I got my start. And Amy hired me when I was a baby. Your I was first a baby chip. Too. My first vibrator. My sweet little baby chip. And now I've come so far. But Curve just came out from Hot Octopus. And although I haven't given and Amy one yet. She was like, doesn't it have a squishy head? I was like, you don't know? And she was like, don't get shashy. I was like, it does. Okay, I'm sorry. I need to give her one. God. Where's get, my fucking vibrator? So it's a, it's our G-Spot product. It has two motors, a bass, and a treble, and you can actually customize the vibrations. I like to call it the G-Spot genius. So if you want to solve your G-Spot mystery... Mm. Go check out the curve. It's curve with a K. We're calling this our sex toy of the week because guess what? I'm going to go try one because April's giving me one. So you can try one at home and then I'll try one. We could all masturbate together. We're actually sold out. Not Peer Pleasure Shop has some, but we're sold out right now. I just found out today. So it's that popular. It's really good. We've sold out. This is the second time in the Boys. U.S. and then Europe is almost sold out. But we will have more. We are producing more. So go get one while they're hot. Go to purepleasureshop.com. Use coupon code SHAMELESSSEX. You also get... 15% off. Do it. Meow. Meow. Let's masturbate together for Masturbation May. Speaking of pleasuring the pussy, let's talk about OMG. Yes, they are actually coming out with season three, which is all about sex toys. But let's talk about season one and season two. So OMG yes, is an online program where you can learn all about pleasuring the vulva, whether you own a vulva, whether you want to pleasure a vulva. Season one is all about external vulva pleasure. Season two is all about internal vulva pleasure. And this is great whether you have a vulva, whether you want to learn to pleasure a vulva, you want to have great orgasms. You're already having great orgasms. And it's only a one-time fee. Basically, you get all access to season one or two with one-time fee, and you just go to omgs.com slash shameless, and you get 10% off. So that's one-time payment. You don't get rebuild. You don't get subscriptions, and it's a really good deal. Plus, we sometimes give away OMGS seasons on our Instagram, so mm-hmm. definitely follow us and what did you on s- Instagram. You always say this. They they re- it was a re- they researched, did research with 20,000 Volvo owners? 20,000 Volvo owners between the ages of 18 to 95, and Anytime you spend money on omgs.com, they fund more pleasure research for the future. So you're supporting the cause. Mm -hmm. And there's not a lot of organizations out there supporting pleasure research. So it's amazing. It's changed my life. I've learned so much about my vulva, my orgasms, my pleasure, as well as um, it's also changed the lives of my clients and our listeners. So go check it out, omgs.com slash shameless. You will not regret it. Are you ready for Piazza's bio? Yes, I am. All right. So Piazza is a somatic sexologist dedicated to helping the world celebrate erotic energy through empowering humans to feel, heal, and embody their full pleasure potential. To learn more, visit I am Piazza Unleashed. That's I am P-Y-A-S-A Unleashed.com. All right, it's interview time. All right, everyone, it is episode time. We're here with return guest, repeat guest, Piazza. And Piazza was here before 
Uh, we had never met Piazza in person. We had mutual friends. And this is extra special because when we were in Costa Rica for a very important healing retreat, Piazza was there with us. And so now Piazza is a dear friend, dear sister to us. We absolutely love, love, love Piazza. And Piazza is also good friends with another mutual friend. And they are together doing a sexuality retreat, a healing retreat, which Piazza will talk about in Costa Rica, actually exactly where April and I just were. And let me tell you, is one of the most magical, beautiful places I've ever been. Like, yeah, I kind of want to live dreaming about going Like, there. I want to be there. Can we go there right now, please? Yes, <laughs> I know. Uh, so without further ado, we will dive on in. And Piazza, you already did this on a past episode. We're going to ask you the same question we always ask, though. So you're going to, as if you never did it before, um, tell us about how you got to where you are today in the field of sexuality. Okay. Well, I would say my early childhood experiences initiated me into sexuality and not necessarily a healthy form. And later in my life, I became a tantrika or practiced sensual body work. And one of the women in the temple where I was working um, started going to the sexological body working school at the Institute for Advanced Studies in Human Sexuality. And that really piqued my interest is a wonderful woman named Tallulah Sulis, who you might know. And um, yeah, so I was inspired to go to the school, get trained and certified in, in sexological body work. And from there, it has become um, a lot of deep diving into training with Betty Martin around consent, pelvic heart activation, and a lot of trauma healing um, trainings that I've done that I bring together like any other sexological body worker or somatic sexologist, all of what our personal interests and trainings are, our own experience and kind of bring it all together into ta-da, somatic sexology. And so it includes hands-on touch, which is unique from a lot of different kinds of therapy. So this brings me to asking, the, the episode we did before was really different. And I'm excited about this episode because it talks about pleasure and helping folks dive in deeper to their pleasure. And so the, the first question here is what gets in the way of people having great sex, no, no matter it's with themselves or with partners or others in general? There are so many answers to that. And I guess what I would like to say is that one of the biggest things that gets in our way has to do with what your name of your podcast is, and that would be shame. We have so much shame around our sexuality, around um, our, our body smells, our body fluids, how our body looks, our, our desires, our needs, right? Being able to speak to them. So shame really stands in the way, and this is part of what blocks us from, from feeling pleasure. So if we want to move into a space of sexual healing or de-armoring, I kind of use those words interchangeably, um, we could look at sexual healing like, you know, the way that Marvin Gaye sang about it mm -hmm. and pleasure, right? Pleasure has physiological benefits. It helps with the cardiovascular health. It downregulates our nervous system. It makes us feel good. We feel connected. It elevates our mood and it actually even slows down the aging process, right? But there's another way that we could look at sexual healing and that would be what I work with the most in my practice, which is about taking full agency of your own body, your own life and for your own pleasure. It is stepping out of victimhood of just circumstance and whatever happens and asking for what you need. So when we remove the shame around what we how we feel about how we feel, then we can free ourselves to be more available to pleasure. Mm. I think of when I felt shame in the past about myself, and, I, and we actually just recorded a podcast with someone who is quoting Brene Brown, who says, um, guilt is that thing I did was bad and shame is more that I'm bad. There's something wrong with me. And I like what you said, how I feel about how I feel. You know, there's something wrong with the way I feel that or how I am. Um, and and bringing that to the term that you have de-armoring, I personally feel when I'm in my my shame around not just sexuality, just in general, um, or there's something about myself that I don't like. Actually, here I'll use a, a, an example. I in my life multiple times have had periods of, like for multiple years where I have been disconnected from my sexuality. I had no libido or just like close to no libido. It was like, is this thing on? And if I was a dimmer switch, you know, ten is like full libido. 
I was at, at zero to two and I'm a sex educator and I had so much shame around it and I talk about it. So I guess it's not that shameful in a way because a lot of people with shame, they want to hide too, right? They um, generally speaking, don't want to share that, but I did because I would hide that. It took a long time to, to and out that. And it felt like a fucking cage. And so I guess that one of my questions about the de-armoring thing is that when you speak to armor and when we're de-armoring, is it kind of like that? We're, we're stuck in something that's keeping us trapped in our sexuality, trapped in our connection to ourselves and others? Yeah. So the word armoring or the concept of armoring came from Wilhelm Reich. So Reich was really popular. Well, he wasn't really popular with the government because they burned all of his books and they put him into jail (laughs) because he was starting a sexual revolution. He was saying that orgasm and pleasure is the key to health, is one of the keys to health, that actually sexual energy is an electrical charge, right? And he was doing experiments to prove this. And then he actually went on to create um, what he called orgone generators to help heal people. And so this was in the 30s. So the idea of geni- of armoring or genital armoring or armoring in general is that we store our emotions in our body. And then this has a physiological response in our tissue right? So it's actually a physiological process that happens as a reaction to our emotions. And so the armoring that we store in our body, and then when we talk about pleasure or sexuality, when our genitals are armored, we can have, like you were speaking about low libido, we can have for women, it could show up as genital as pain in sex or Um, For men, difficulty achieving orgasm, premature ejaculation, so many different ways that it shows up when it's stored in the genitals. So the idea of de-armoring that I'm talking about here when de-armoring our pleasure, um, we can approach through physiological ways or hands-on bodywork ways um, with the self or with a partner or with a therapist. But then it's also looking at the conditioning that we hold, right? The shame, like why do we feel shame about our bodies or why do we feel shame about liking sex, right? And and how does that show up? One of the ways that we can notice if we have shame would be to notice the sensations that happen in the body. You know, we might have flushing in the the face, right? We get all red when we feel embarrassed because we're feeling shame or we're sweating or we might feel a, a pain or attention in our body somewhere. So noticing where we're feeling or what kinds of sensations we're feeling in relation to our body image or our likes and our needs and our desires is going to give us a clue as to our relationship with that. When it comes to shame, uh, well, we've talked about it endlessly and it's something that I had, I dealt with a long time in my life. I was ashamed about uh, a lot of pieces of of things that had occurred in my life, you know, getting an STI at a young age and then not knowing I could, I couldn't orgasm with partners. So I would fake things and then I'd be, I'd have shame around that. So I I know that there's so many different levels of shame and, um, there's work to do around any kind of shame that you have, whether it's inside the bedroom or outside of the bedroom. So let's talk about what what you mentioned with this de-armoring of, um, of these pieces and how can someone, like, what are the steps people can take to de-armor? There's so many different ways to approach it. One lovely thing that I like to, to share with, with people is have a look at your genitals. Mm. If you take out a mirror, this is probably not new, new idea to, for you, but take a, take a mirror and look at your genitals and notice what they look like, what the color is, how, how your response is, right? Start to get comfortable with your body start to appreciate your body. Yeah, I know people that are in their 40s who have barely looked at their genitals, right? And so, you know, they've lived this whole life of, uh, of and, and and when I, I'm actually talking about vulva owners, by the way, because the penis owners generally can see them, although maybe they haven't looked at their assholes, I don't know. This is kind of like practices that we're doing regularly and not just like check in once and see you later. Sure, I mean, practices. So taking a look in the mirror is gonna be a wonderful start. And it's always good to go back to the mirror and and have a look. And 
and learn to appreciate and really like love our genitals, appreciate the pleasure that that is available to us just to, to start maybe practicing masturbation. That could be a wonderful practice to, to bring into your daily life and not just going directly as you know, towards orgasm or, you know, very goal oriented pleasure, but to really learn how to relax into pleasure is the way that we can develop sustained pleasure because our, I mean, our whole society is like based on pleasure, right? Like eating that ice cream or eating that chocolate or going to that movie or whatever it is that is, you know, supposedly very pleasure oriented, but this, this pleasure that we can, that we're walking around with this ability to have pleasure all the time that's right there in our bodies, um, we sometimes forget about and just to really relax into and learn how to feel safe to expand that pleasure, right? So that's a, that's a, a practice. You could set aside seven days. Okay. Every day at 11 o'clock, I'm going to put my alarm on and I'm going to give myself a half an hour of pleasure. And that that doesn't mean that you have to even just go directly for the genitals. Our entire body is wired for pleasure. So, you know, learning to feel the pleasure that we can experience in our hands, even if we change our touch, we shift our touch to a lighter, slower touch. And when you think that you're slow, slow it down even more and see how much more pleasure you can experience. One thing I, I wanted to ask you, because the whole slowing down piece is something that uh, we have spoke to endlessly. And it's hard for me sometimes because I operate so fast. Uh, and sometimes I just want to experience a pleasure. And being mindful and slowing down really does help with the sensual touch. When something wasn't maybe sensual yeah. before, it can really, uh, we were speaking to the, the, um, the, sexual touch or sensual touch and the effects on the body, what the electromagnetic oh, yeah. currents or not magnetic, is it electromagnetic currents? Yeah. So what Reich was doing is he was putting um, sensors on the human skin and somebody would actually give themselves an orgasm or I'm not really sure who was giving them an orgasm. <laughs> they were having an orgasmic experience. And what he was seeing is that the electrical charge would raise and then when he was testing it and somebody was feeling in a, shall we say, a down mood, he was seeing that the electrical energy was going down and he could tell through these sensors um, and the scientific work that he was doing is that the energy when somebody was feeling down or not embodied really, right, not in a pleasurable state, their energy would go inward. So in Tantra, they, you know, we talk a lot about like a state of contraction and with the experiment with the science and he was showing that it was going outward with pleasure, it was expanding. So this whole concept of, of contraction and expansion. So the contraction again, brings it back to the armoring, right? Mm -hmm. When, when there's a contraction in the pelvis, it's more difficult to feel sensation. So when our whole body and specifically our pelvis opens up, we can feel more. So is that, so that's kind of what I wanted to touch on. So getting yeah. in touch. So I'm a human that is getting in touch with my shame and whether it's around uh, pleasure or, or my genitals or something, some trauma that happened that I, that I haven't discussed to shed light on it. This work is your own to do, right? I, well, or with professionals outside of if you're in partnership. Um, that's what I guess my question is, is this some work that should be taken outside of a partnership or is it something that you can experience with your partner? Hmm. Absolutely. Okay. So we could be doing solo de-armoring. We can be doing it on ourselves. And there's really amazing pelvic wands out there that you can get. Um, I think one is called the Lotus Touch. And I recommend that for, you know, working um, inside, you can work inside the anus or you can work inside the vagina to release points. So you can explore and find where there's tension in your own body. And of, absolutely, you could I would recommend make some ambiance, you know, have some candles lit and put on some music and really set the side of time, set the time aside <laughs> <laughs> to turn off your phone and devote this time to exploring. So 
to, to learn genital de-armoring is maybe better. I would recommend doing a class, um, but you can also explore if you're a partner and you have a, a partner with a, with a yoni, you can go in with nice lubrication with consent. And this is something else that I, right here, I just want to say that one of the biggest things that we can do to increase our pleasure is to stop tolerating things that don't feel good and to practice understanding our own embodied consent. What are those things that we have an absolute fuck yes to? Mm -hmm. So if you have a fuck yes in your body to having your partner um, do some genital de-armoring exploration, even if they're not a professional, then invite them. Instead of saying, may I enter you now, right? Tell me when you're ready. Mm -hmm. And this is a huge piece that I have noticed when, for myself when working with others and with my own self and sexuality is if I have the permission, which is always my right, to say, okay, I'm ready for you to enter me now, that might not happen right away, you know? We might, then we have to really get in touch with our own embodied consent, right? We have to feel it. And then we can invite that person, that partner who's willing to give us some genital touch in and they can explore and, you know, just like explore. I'm trying to, I'm, I'm, I'm demonstrating with my hand. hand. Yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah. you can explore with your, with your finger gently inside the vaginal canal or inside the anus, which, which all sexes have and, you know, make contact and press a little bit and have communication and eye contact with your partner and ask them what it is that they're feeling there. What is the sensation? Does it feel tight? Does it feel like it's ripping? Does it feel pleasurable? Does it feel numb, right? So you can be doing this with yourself or with your partner. How does it feel? And, and if it feels like there's tension there, which is so showing up as whatever type of sensation it is, then hold your hand or your touch there and allow it to unwind. And this might be a little bit more advanced, but some people, maybe you practice massage, you know? But so with that embodied consent, really don't, we don't wanna be brave and push ourselves into any kind of sexual experience or I need this, I need this yoni massage. So I'm gonna go out and get this like creepy practitioner guy that I don't actually feel good about and just do it anyway, because I need this for my own healing. You want to stay in touch with what feels right. Mm. And so you can do it with yourself, with a partner, and you can do it with um, a practitioner, with a somatic sexologist or a, a sexological body worker. There are tantricas. And, and also I wanna mention, I. I spoke more about people with a vulva, I want to say that those with a lingam or a penis, you know, you can be pressing points on the, on the penis and see, make contact, press in a little bit, invite the person to be in touch with how that feels. Okay, time for a quick break. This podcast was made possible by Uberlube. It's a luxurious silicone lubricant that enhances sex and intimacy. We receive emails from listeners who have tried Uberlube and the feedback is unanimous. We never knew lube could be this good. It's also less likely to throw off the pH than most other lubes, and there are thousands of doctors recommending Uberlube to their patients, whether they want to make their hot sex even hotter or for folks experiencing dryness. Uberlube is without a doubt my favorite lube. It has no flavor, no scent, and feels absolutely amazing on my body. And it isn't just for sex. I use it to tame my hair frizzies, to prevent chafing, and I even put some in my mouth before an oral sex session. Totally ups my blowjob game. Oh, and the bottle, it's beautiful. It looks like a cosmetic product. So I just leave it out on my nightstand totally shamelessly. To learn why we think it's the best lube on the planet, check out uberlube.com and use code SHAMELESSSEX for 10% off plus free shipping. Again, that's uberlube.com and use code SHAMELESSSEX for 10% off and free shipping. This podcast was also made possible by Manscaped. Father's Day is just around the corner, and you probably need a gift for a hairy husband, significant other, father, sugar daddy, or perhaps the father of your dog. Make the man in your life proud this year and get him something from Manscaped. 
Manscaped is our favorite men's brand dedicated to below-the-waist grooming, and they just launched their Lawnmower 4.0. Get 20% off and free shipping with the code SHAMELESS at manscaped.com. I'm always at a loss as to what to get my dad for Father's Day, but this year, I'm giving him the gift of Manscaped. Since he's on the hairier side and is just getting back into the dating game, I want to help him get his groove back, and one of the best trimmers on the market will do that. The Lawnmower 4.0 is waterproof, rechargeable, and features cutting-edge ceramic blade and an ultra-bright LED spotlight. He's a little blonde, so that'll help him, leaving him zero excuses for not having a precise shave before he heads out on the town. You, too, can get your beloved ball owner the gift of Manscaped now with 20% off and free shipping with the code SHAMELESS at manscaped.com. That's 20% off with free shipping at manscaped.com and use code SHAMELESS. Get the men in your life a gift you know they will use this Father's Day with Manscaped. And now back to the show. The part about embodied consent, I, I think, is so, so valuable um, because I think a lot of that's new concept for a lot of folks. And I know I can speak for myself. I've definitely done a lot of tolerating or compliant sex or want to be like the nice girl. I don't want to be too much. And, you know, faked orgasms or think something didn't feel that great. But I still said yes. Or I had a yes, but I didn't speak up for it because I didn't want to change the mood. So there's just a lot of caretaking, I think, coming back to your part about agency and that it starts with us really declaring and standing up for our ourselves in a, in a powerful way. And there's all these pictures that you're painting, but my, this bit, I have this visual of all these layers and yeah. And like these steps. And I think, I guess what I'm hearing is like, you might listeners might hear, well, I have this one down. I don't have this one down or like, Oh, as I'm listening, I really don't have any of them down. You peel all the layers back and you see even just feeling your own body. You don't have down. That's a big first step in figuring out where that came from. And, and I can propose this as a question of what you think about this, but in understanding that and, and or if you don't even know if you're aware of, do I feel my body or not? That's that's even before that, right? I didn't know that I had, uh, that I override my system. I work really, or I move really quickly um, and that I was tolerating and com- had compliance sex uh, because I was just moving really fast. I didn't know I had pain in certain areas or numbness because I wasn't even feeling. And then when I feel I was moving so fast that I couldn't feel. Uh, and then when I actually did things like this, you're speaking to genital mapping, I learned so much to it about this. So are you, is this something in the retreat that y'all are doing? Are people, I know it's, this is mostly for, for vulva owning individuals. Are they actually going to be doing these kind of sessions on themselves? Like this will be something that they'll do in the retreat. Yes. And so I always work whenever I share anything, there's always the option to opt out. Even if one is part of the retreat or any kind of workshop that I share, they can start. They could be like, yeah, I want to do that. And if they want to opt out, they can stop. So, um, but where I was going with that actually is that, yes, we will be working on ourselves. And if there is a unanimous decision from everybody, there will be days that women will be working on each other. Hmm. And, and, but if somebody wants to opt out, they can also just be witness to the experience and maybe work on themselves during that time or just observe the room and and find their own sense of safety you know like knowing that you can always stop in any experience um, no matter how far you've gone say in that room where we're practicing pelvic release or in a sexual experience that you're having knowing that you can stop is one of the biggest ways that you can reclaim your pleasure knowing that you can be like, you know what? I am just not feeling this anymore. And I would like to stop. That but these is- are the, the less sexy, um, less exciting ideas about how we reclaim our pleasure, but it's really important to know. And also I, I want to speak to if you are in partnership with someone that asks you to stop because they are possibly going through these uh, sensations or they're feeling more into your body, honoring that's a huge piece too, because I know I've been in situations in my past where I did say stop, or I was like, Hey, this doesn't feel good right now. And, and then it was kind of like frustration on the other person's part, or what did I do wrong? Or that I felt, and that created more shame. And I think, so there's all sorts of pieces. So if you're a person that wants to hold space and offer uh, 
you know, a support at, at, for this person, or if you are going through it or they are, I think just honoring that is really huge. That's what came up for me when we were speaking to it, because mm-hmm. I think that it's, it's difficult sometimes to do that because you take it on yourself. I know that Amy, you had too. That's why compliant sex happened. And that's totally. why, that's why I'd fake orgasms. Well, oh. making it personal. Yeah. Not personalizing it. So it's just because someone has a no or a pause or slow down, not being like, Oh, I'm bad or I'm wrong or you're bad. There's something wrong, What's with, wrong this. with me. Instead, I would say, thank them. Be like, yeah, thank okay. you for speaking your truth or what you need. Like, and if that includes us stopping having sex, like, thank you. And wouldn't we rather have, well, I can't speak for everyone, but wouldn't most folks rather have someone speak their truth and actually enjoy having sex with you than have compliant sex with you? I mean, I know you're getting laid on both sides of it, but like, wouldn't you rather it come from a place of that's more, more powerful? And and this goes for, for all, I know penis owners who fake orgasms and who feel pressured and that they can't say no, or they have to show up more in this way when they're not getting a yes. Um, and so I, I think I want to normalize that experience too, but yeah, it's, it's a journey. And, and I think coming more from the Volvo owning side, we have a lot of it here. It's been around for what more than centuries, probably like thousands of years too, um, that we're wearing it's, it's armor. It's like ancient armor that we're wearing. Right. Absolutely. So what I was discussing a little bit before dem- or <laughs> demonstrating with my hands here that nobody else can see except us, um, is more like pe- releasing the pelvis. But body mapping is a wonderful thing that you can do to find out what you like, because, um, you know, there's so many things that we think that we should like. And but unless we've really explored to find out what it is that we like, we might not know what it is or even how to describe it. So, you know, one of the ways that we go along with somebody else's agenda or what we think, like if somebody says, think about this. So somebody said, do you, do you like this? And you know, they're like touching your nipples. Do you like this? And you're like, yeah, it's okay. Or, you know, how would you like me to touch you? Well, anything that you do is good. You know, actually, no, it's, that's actually going along with something else, but knowing what you want. And so body mapping is a wonderful way. So that includes the entire body. And that would be like, exploring different kinds of touch. Do you like pinching on your nipples? I don't know. Let's try it out. And so doing it as an exploration and like, like April was sharing, if they don't like that, um, the, the nipple pinching or whatever it is, don't, yeah, don't take it personally because this is an exploration. And again, it's something that I would recommend doing inside of a container, light some candles, This is devoted to finding out, do I like spanking, nipple pinching? Do I like um, really soft, slow touch? Or what is it that I like? And then taking notes so that later on, you could be like, you know, I really loved it when you were just circling my clitoris with your tongue, just like that, right? We can describe it better. And that's a way to, to know our own body and take agency of our pleasure and our body and our life. Absolutely. And I want to point to the fact that sometimes you might not like your nipples uh, tweaked really hard. And sometimes you may really enjoy that. Day. Right. Yeah. You had an, a, what, an armpit orgasm when you didn't like people touching your armpits. I was like, years. I hate tickling. And I yeah. had, so I had someone make it out of my armpit. And I was like, this feels amazing. Well, I also wasn't a nipple person. I, I really didn't like have my nipples touched for 32 years. Well, I, I probably wasn't touching my nipples when I was like one, but um, at any rate, until I had this experience where someone was consensually, I was part of an exercise in one of my, um, the sex and relationship coaching training that I was a part of anyways. And all of a sudden my nipples were online. I was like, I have three clits now. And, but if I would have bought into the old story of this is how sex should be, how it should look, this is what it was before. This is how I am. I would never have discovered these things. So I like what you're inviting. And if like, it didn't you know, feel good, then you would have said, because I know, hey, yeah. I'm okay. That doesn't feel well, good I probably to me right now. I was much more co- compliant in my past. It took me really, and I'm still learning. It's like three steps forward, one step back. Like I took me really to get in my 30s to, to advocate for myself in a more powerful way. In fact, when I was 
uh, when I in my last relationship, 34, I had, I had a big breakthrough where I was like, holy shit, I've been disregarding my pussy for a long time. I have not been listening to this girl. And I was like, girl, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I'm gonna start listening to you. It's not, and I can't say I've done it perfectly, but, um, I think that this work is really, really powerful that you're speaking to. And I'd like to, so, cause, so this retreat, I, you're going to, I'm you're going to have to remind me of the details. It's in July. This is 2021. It's in Costa Rica. Can you tell our les- listeners a little bit more about the retreat? What they can, expect when is it and how can they sign up for this okay and then there's one more thing i want to share actually yeah. before that. april was talking about context basically when you said like maybe one day i like my nipples pinched and then the next day i don't like my nipples pinched and that's a really important point and so body mapping could be returned to at any time also because being on going on or off hormones could affect your your um sensation and what you like going through menopause could affect what you like. I know that personally, as I've gone through that journey in the last few years, I am now an official crone, Mm -hmm. you know, medications, different kinds of medications can change the way we experience sensations in the body. And so, and then also context. So even if you did a body mapping and you're like, okay, I think I know everything that my partner likes now, well, that could change. So that was just a really good point that I want to follow up. And then thank you for the invitation to share about the retreat. So the the name of this retreat is a sexual healing initiation and celebration, because it's really important that we're celebrating our sexuality. July 12th to the 19th. And it's in Costa Rica. You can go to my website, IamPiazzaUnleashed.com and find out more about it. We're going to be, like we were sharing before, um, I'm going to bring a lot of different ways that we can relax and release the pelvis because the pelvis is such a powerful place that holds our creative energy, our sexuality, right? And all these ideas and thoughts and beliefs. So we're going to release that from the tissue as much as is ready to be released at that time. We're going to do a lot of embodiment and consent practices. We're going to learn to learn about boundaries, talk about boundaries, connect with the river and the mountains and dance and sing and really see what it's like to have a pleasurable time in the body and really find the safety that is necessary to feel safe enough to experience pleasure. And and if I didn't say already, this is for people with vulvas and yeah, get in touch with me. So I'm, I'm doing interviews with people who are interested in coming so that I can go a little bit more even into what is involved in that retreat and make sure that we're on the same page and it's feeling good and you have a fuck yes. And there's fairly a limited amount of space as well because we've been to that retreat center. And uh, so I'm not sure how many uh, people you can take on, especially with that kind of work. Uh, But if you're interested at all, and this sounds like something, I would reach out to Piazza because we love shameless sex and we want you to have access, but there's also other folks out there that um, are going to want access too. So what is it, 30 people, 20 people? How many people can actually? I think, yeah, we have a capacity of about 30 people. And actually, now that you said shameless sex, I want to say that I am giving a discount to anybody who contacts me about the retreat and would like to come if they say, I heard about this from the Shameless Sex Podcast. You're going to get $200 off. Mm. That place in general is oh just incredible. The food's incredible. The energy's incredible. And there's, there's all sorts of other activities outside of just the retreat. There's like, nothing I, like it. It's a he- it's, it's healing. You will superb. come back feeling so fucking good. So, yeah. And you'll be with Piazza yes. here. And so. you'll be with Piazza yes. and some other amazing practitioners that are um, really practiced and, and wonderful humans. So... Definitely, definitely check out the link, uh, the I am Piazza Unleashed, and you can also access any of that on our website. If, you, if you're driving, don't write it, okay? <laughs> just just go to the website, shamelessx.com. And Piazza, thank you. You are a light, a love. We absolutely adore you. And go ahead, if y'all, it's July. It's safe to travel, pretty much. Everybody's traveling. So it's time for a for a vacation, and, and a vacation for yourself is is one of the most important things to do. I know how refreshed I was after I came back from Costa Rica. I think that's why I was able to actually move forward with life. I was like, yay. So thank you though, for sharing your work with us and uh, for helping folks out there de-armor and pleasure up. I think 
that's going to be really good. So juicy and yummy. So thank you, Piazza. Thank you so much. Thank you, Amy. Thank you, April. I really appreciate you too. And it's so good to see you. I know I want to give you a hug and to all of our listeners out there, yes. you know, what's coming. It's margins wine time. Amy and I have a glass pretty much a day. It keeps the doctor away. I'm telling you, and we're not making medical claims here. The <laughs> FDA did not approve that, but if you want to check out why we love wine so much, go to marginswine.com. It's boutique, small batch wine, women owned and operated. And it's actually local here in Santa Cruz, but they ship all over. And she does only two releases a year. So you can also save money. Just go to our website, check out the coupon codes there. And we will see you next Tuesday. I love you all. Ciao for now. Want to learn more? Go to shamelesssex.com. And for 15% off of some of our favorite sex toys, use code shamelesssex at purepleasureshop.com.